Today we're going over use case scenarios of the DJI Dock 2. Stay tuned. So Jonathan, let's talk about some of the use case scenarios of the Dock 2 and the, the drone that goes with it. So we have multiple use case scenarios. Let's isolate and talk about commercial uses. How this can come in handy is it can be used as a progress report tracker on site. Every single day you can have it fly the same mission and then do an overlap from the previous mission to show you what has changed. So that way at the end of the day you can get a report of anything that's changed, if any gates were left open, if any equipment was left insecured, or if there's people accessing areas that they shouldn't. Yeah, stockpiles, how much of the stockpile has been moved, uh, supply of lumber, where things are located, and again, security, like you mentioned. So what are some of the other um, situations where we'd be doing inspections? We have to remember this drone will be able to do everything a non doc drone has been able to do already. So things such as volumetric measurements in the construction site, like you said, pipeline inspection, flying along the entire pipeline, with that thermal camera, looking for hot spots, looking for areas that have collapsed. Anything that we've able to do before, we can do it now just autonomously. And programming and to do so. And, programming. and if we had a if we knew we had a big major storm coming in a certain area, we could go ahead and document all the pipelines, we could document where the wires are, overhang wires are, and then after the storm, go back and verify that everything's in working order and we still have everything the way it's supposed to be. So that's commercial. Let's talk about public safety. And I wanna start all the way from the edge and talk about the beach for lifeguards and stuff like that. So if we had a situation, well, we don't even need a situation. We could have the drone Thompson fly the coast just verifying tide and that nobody's getting pulled out from the tide, right? Absolutely, and you can add even more to that. There's hardwares now that are that you can integrate with the dock along with the software solutions that have AI built in for recognizing people and vehicles. So every couple of hours, you can have the drone do a sweep of the beach and it'll be able to automatically recognize if somebody is outside a marked point that we don't want them to be. 500 yards and it identifies, we got someone past that marker and then throws off a, an alert. Exactly, so that, and that can be all done autonomously without having to have a person look there at the video to try and find somebody that's out in the open. And then once it does identify, identify that person out in the water, we can put a, a marker down, get the lat long on that marker, and then notify rescue teams to come out and make the rescue. Absolutely, and we can always keep the drone having eyes on that target until we get somebody there able to help. So let's talk about uh, the police and law enforcement. Tell me how, where would we locate the dock station? Would we put it on a rooftop? If we wanted to cover a whole area, a whole city area, how, how do we go about doing that, and how do we manage all these dock stations? Right, so great question. So you wanna start incrementally with areas that you're going to be using it at the most and start with a two nautical mile circle that you know you're responding to a lot of calls. It's a high crime area. It's a area with high risk of fires or near a hospital, major interest points. From there, you can expand that network of, of radiuses to have them overlap and use m many of the softwares that are currently available with it to dial it in and create a, a, a secured fence that is able to respond within minutes mm -hmm. to, to any call that comes in. And I'd also add to that, that any public safety out there that's reluctant to actually try a system like this, you don't need to go and buy 10 different dock stations and throw them all over the city. Try one dock station, test run it, find out how many lives you're gonna save with it, how many buildings and property you're gonna save with that system, and how much taxpayer money you're gonna save with having a dock station there. It's gonna actually be a, a benefit in all respects having that station out there. Um, for fire service, I'll tell you what, this is a great asset to put out a big campaign brush fire. You have the drone that's gonna be flying autonomously, programmed to fly every three or four hours. It's gonna give you information back to where the fire is, where it's located, how fast is it burning. And by the way, with the built-in weather station, we're able to identify the wind speeds in that specific vicinity. And so we're able to verify all these things, real-time information, 
pushed out to all the battalion chiefs on that fire, and they're gonna in, they're gonna go ahead and you know talk to the units on the ground to tell them where to go and how to get there, and most importantly, we're gonna be able to make those evacuations to save the people from being involved in that brush fire. Absolutely, the, the use cases are really limitless with, with this piece of hardware, especially now that so many software companies are adapting to this new hardware and are coming up with new use cases daily, uh, both in the civil sector and in the uh, police, fire, and safety sector. You know, and I've also seen these actually located at an airport. Now, we know that airport has controlled airspace. But the controllers are controlling the planes. And a lot of times after an accident or they have an issue with an airplane that comes in, a blown tire, they need to go and verify that the runway's clear, that everything's safe. And this is a great asset to have on the airport to do that. Also, you're getting security throughout the airport and around the airport. So you're able to fly the drone at a safe location and mitigating the other drones or the other aircraft that are in the air and do it all safely, gathering all that information it's really going to be doing the workload of 10 people in just minutes. Absolutely. It's just a great tool around to be a force multiplier, especially for smaller departments that, let's say, can't afford or don't have a, the resources for a full-on aviation team, a helicopter team. You can have the same uh, amount of features, it, obviously in a smaller package, a smaller area, and for a much cheaper price. Also. Companies like refineries and mining and things like that, in a refinery, you know, there's all types of dangers that are going on while everybody's working. And if you, you know, as you were talking about earlier, you can have an alarm actually set off and launch the drone on its own, or you could just verify on a timely base uh, every eight hours, go do a check around the area. So there's, you're getting that safety, you're getting situational information if you had a, an emergency and you're getting all that information which is great let's talk a little bit about mining how would this be used for mining so yeah it's, it's a it's a great question so right now there's a lot of open pit mines out there and how folks are still doing the checks to see the bracing on the walls the depth the size of the rocks and everything like that the software that are being used with regular drones it, it's growing exponentially and it's actually taking off on that industry. Now imagine that we put these on those mine sites. Now we remove the operator from the equation as well. And we can have this do every four, six hours or after major weather events, go and check the safety and security of those open pit mines. And as well, while it's doing that, it can use the other softwares to get volumetric measurements of different piles. So mm -hmm. you're checking for safety and you're also checking for your current stock levels all in one go. You know, another thing that came to mind is railroads. And we talked about it earlier also, but we can daisy chain these drones and these boxes so that we can carry vast areas. So whether we're doing an inspection on a railroad or we're back at the beach and we're doing lifeguard jobs, you know, to help do the, the security of the water and make sure everybody's safe, you can have them daisy chained all the way down the coast so that you can cover the entire coast. Essentially, the, the, the possibilities are really endless and the use case is just gonna vary based on what software we're gonna be using for it. Uh, going back to the security uh, section, let's say for data centers or area that want high security and already have a video management system, door alarms, gate alarms, they're able to tie this into the drone and the drone automatically fly to that alarm location and then with the built-in AI recognition uh, hardware that we'll put in the loop here, they're able to identify if any vehicles or personnel are where they're not supposed to be. And what people forget is this can be used as a deterrent. Yeah. If when somebody that's doing something they're not supposed to, if they see a drone that's looking at them, they're usually gonna wanna stop and right. get out of there because yeah, yeah. they know they're being recorded. Essentially, you could put this on every rooftop of any commercial building and any alarm that goes off, whether it's fire, burglary, the drone's gonna launch and get information. And like you say, it could be a deterrent from people coming in or wanting to leave. 
essentially. And as long as those alarm systems have access to the internet, which it being 2024, most of these alarm systems are already connected to the internet one way or another, we're able to tie it into the drone and have it respond accordingly. So Derek, another good one is on the agriculture and the farming industry. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these cattle and, and farming areas, they're, they're locked in, they're, they're in a fixed area. So you're able to get, for instance, animal count, able to see if a fence has been damaged or broken, able to see if a animal hasn't moved from the last time it was scanned, able to see where they're feeding, where they're congregating to, and then with the help of AI, start building a really great plan on how to better your farm. Yeah, that's awesome. And also, if you happen to have a break in that fence and a cattle or horse gets away, gets out, you're able to identify where it's located. You could use the thermal also on the drone and, and get that information right away and go get the, your cattle back. Absolutely. So it's a great scenario. Uh, Derek, a good one that I just actually got off a call with is somebody that wants to put one of these at their residence. So they have a pretty large area. It's in the dark and they're afraid of somebody coming in and, and, and doing something to their property or stealing their things. And after doing the math, the system being set up there actually ended up being much cheaper than the security guards that they currently have. Yeah, yeah. So and a deterrent. And a deterrent. And they're also able to get a larger scan of their entire uh, property. And at nighttime, with the thermal, able to easily spot somebody trying to break in with a much lower cost than having somebody there as a security guard. Lower cost and better situational awareness all the way around. Exactly. Yeah. So natural disasters is one of the best case scenarios I can think of also for this system. Having an area like Katrina or somewhere that has been flooded out, very difficult to get to some houses or some areas because the roads are shut down or flooded out. They need to figure out who needs to be saved and who doesn't. And one of the best ways is to get eyes up in the air using something like this to not only capture and figure out who needs what, but where did the storm go? What's the extent of the storm? And then having ongoing intel on what's happening with that storm in this, use, utilizing the dock. Exactly, and if these being preset at uh, safer locations that would have a backup power, let's say hospitals or precincts uh, that they can run off a generator with a Starlink, you'll have them in areas that might not otherwise be accessible for a person with a regular drone. So, and they'll be able to respond a lot quicker. As soon as those weather conditions roll out, the drone will be able to get up and get the first eye view of the area without running the risk to any personnel. Yeah, that's great. So we're gonna be doing a whole series on the dock station two on how to set it up, all the different types of software that we're gonna be using. So stay tuned for that. This is Derek Ward with DSLR Pros. And I'm Jonathan Malnero. Catch you next time.